The fallout from Attorney General William Barr's testimony earlier this week. Let's bring in Chris Wallace, anchor of Fox News Sunday, ahead of the weekend. We appreciate your time on this Friday morning. Chris, good morning to you. Morning to you, Sandra. So what do you make of what you have seen so far as far as the reaction to the AG's testimony earlier this week and ahead of the release of the redacted report possibly next week? Well, look, this is, this is highly charged. We knew it was going to be highly charged politically. Uh, obviously, Democrats are upset that the Mueller report doesn't seem to have found more dirt, more evidence of, of criminality or at least a bad behavior by the president. We know that from the, uh, Mr. Barr's uh, bottom line conclusions that he gave when he first received the report. Um, the word spy is charged, uh, and, and you, I think that Barr realized that because at the end of his congressional hearing, he said, look, I, after reviewing all of the, as he put a colloquies I've had with various members of the Senate, uh, maybe I should say a, a surveillance and whether or not it was proper or not. There is an absolutely legitimate question and a legitimate investigation, in fact, is already going on by the inspector general as to whether or not the surveillance of the Trump campaign, members of that campaign was legitimate, was based on reasonable concerns. Uh, the use of the word spy, though, is charged. I mean, think of it. If you were going to talk about uh, the Justice Department uh, surveilling organized crime figures, would you call that spying? No, you'd call it surveillance. And, and uh, in I'll, as much as Bar Barr is saying, yeah. no, let me, if I may just finish, sure. in as much as Barr is saying, look, I'm going to investigate whether it was legitimate surveillance or not. Maybe the use of the word spy, he got ahead of himself. Well, I'm, we just asked Senator Kennedy about that, just that, and I think a lot of people are having a hard time differentiating uh, between using the actual word spying versus surveillance, and some agree that it, it's the same thing. Rod Rosenstein, uh, interesting to see him come to the defense of William Barr in this way. Uh, Deputy Attorney General uh, rebuts Democrats' suggestions. This is in the Wall Street Journal this morning that William Barr is trying to mislead. Here he says he's being as forthcoming as he can. And so this notion that he's trying to mislead people, I think, is just completely bizarre. But that's not, that's not stopping Democrats from questioning Barr's credibility. No. And, and again, this gets back to the extreme politics of, of this whole situation. I remember we did a Fox News poll just before the, the Mueller report was even released. And at the time, I think it was 70 percent basically said, we don't care what it says. We're, it's not going to change our mind. And that was uh, conservatives who obviously were defending the president, saying whatever Bar uh, Mueller found, and we didn't know at that time what they were going to find, it wasn't going to change their mind. And liberals saying uh, the same thing. It wasn't going to change their mind. Obviously, as I pointed out, a, a lot mm -hmm. of Democrats are upset with what Bill Barr, we don't know, obviously, the Mueller report. All we know is as it has been interpreted by Bill Barr. Uh, but they're upset about that. And, and uh, you know, all I'd say to Rod Rosenstein, who I think probably understands it himself, is uh, welcome to the political world where, you know, everybody has their own set of facts. And if you don't like the other side set of facts, you're going to find fault with them and raise questions about their credibility. That being said, Chris, let's talk 2020. Uh, this morning, Politico, Buttigieg busts out in Iowa. Here's the latest Monmouth uh, University polling uh, along, among support from Democratic voters in Iowa. Biden, although not formally in the race, still leads the pack there, 27 percent. Bernie Sanders, 16 percent. Buttigieg, 9 percent. Third for Democratic voters in Iowa, notably absent there, is Beto O'Rourke. Uh, and there is this piece in the Washington Post this morning, how Buttigieg stole Beto's mojo. In that piece, they say Buttigieg mania isn't really a thing, and that's not only because it's a mouthful, it's because Buttigieg is appealing not for being larger than life, but for being regular size. That's refreshing in an era, whereas Buttigieg himself pointed out, one nominee in the last presidential election put, I'm with her, on campaign buttons, and the other was Donald Trump. So Buttigieg... Um, surging in Iowa suddenly. Well, you know what? I got to say, I'm very proud. I think you uh, and I and a lot of people have learned to say his name properly. And it took a little <laughs> while for all of us. Um, he's he's a really intriguing figure. And you know, I don't make much of the Biden number. A lot of that is 
this is very interesting. It came out in one of those polls. He's also third in New Hampshire, as well as in mm -hmm. Iowa. 24% of people don't even know who Buttigieg is, and I think it's a full 50% have no opinion on him. So he's only playing in a universe of 50% of the electorate, as opposed to Bernie Sanders uh, and Joe Biden, who have 100% name recognition. And my guess is about 99% people have an opinion about them one way or another. So Buttigieg, with, with still largely unknown outside, of political junkies has made a real impression. He's a very impressive guy. He's uh, a Rhodes Scholar. He left, he took a leave of absence as the mayor of South Bend, Indiana, to serve in Afghanistan. Uh, he's smart as the Dickens. Uh, he's got some issues. He's 37 years old. He's only been the mayor of a small town of 100,000 people, as I say, South Bend, Indiana. But it, it certainly is true that he is the bright, shiny object on the horizon, and there's no question that he has stolen the, the thunder uh, of uh, Beto O'Rourke because, frankly, uh, there's more substance there. He he's actually has, you can like them or dislike them, but he's got some interesting, refreshing ideas, uh, and there's some specific and substance there. It isn't all so, uh, style, style and sizzle. So uh, he, he's a real factor. Now, whether he can continue, he's had a great introduction. Whether he can continue uh, to build question. on that is going to be the big challenge for him. We will see probably a, a conversation a lot like this coming up on Fox News Sunday this weekend. Chris, we look forward to it. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you.